Welcome to this service of worship, brought to you by Monroe Street Church. We are glad you are here. We have resumed in-person worship outside on our lawn at 10.30 each Sunday. We invite you to join us. We will continue to offer this virtual service as well. As a church, we are committed to being a welcoming community, celebrating diversity of all racial, ethnic, cultural backgrounds, sexual orientations, or gender identities. Our mission is to deepen faith, engage our neighborhood, and to become an inclusive community. I am Pastor Larry Clark, who along with Pastor Elizabeth Rand served this congregation. We hope that you will tune in or join us in person each week. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Rand. I am one of the pastors at Monroe Street Church. It is a joy to be worshiping with you this morning. I invite us now to center our hearts and minds on God as we pray together. This week, let us remember in our prayers our graduates from high school and college. And may we also pray for Fayez Afzal, a nine-year-old boy who was orphaned after his family was killed in a terrorist attack in London, Ontario. Let us pray. We welcome you, Spirit of God, you who seek our company and choose to make yourself known to us. We are grateful for your many blessings, especially for all those persons who share life in Christ with us and who walk with us through all of our joys and sorrows. We pray for your church, that we may live as a fellowship in union with you and with one another. We lift up our graduates. We pray for them in their days to come. And we pray for victims of violence, especially for young Fayez, who lost his family to hate. And we pray for the earth you have made, that the seas and skies, forests and fields would show your goodness and glory. Through Christ, we offer all of our prayers. Amen. Our New Testament lesson comes today from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 42. This is a description of the first Christian community, a group of women and men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and initiated into the body of Christ through the waters of baptism. The writer of Acts tells us, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone because of many wonders and signs that were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. 
Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is God's word for us today. We can trust it. In the last two and a half weeks, our family traveled almost 5,000 miles on a Western road trip. We saw extraordinary landscapes and marveled at the beauty and power of God's creation. On one of my favorite days, we drove from the Black Hills of South Dakota across the state of Wyoming. I spent the whole day exclaiming because the, root, the views kept changing so dramatically out our window. We ended up in Montana early that evening and we drove into the Lamar Valley of Yellowstone National Park, hoping to see some wildlife. Shortly after we got into the park, we saw a silver fox standing in the center of the road and we oohed and awed at it. Then we drove and drove, and finally I said, look at those dots out there in the field. I think we see some bison. We stopped and leaned out the windows with our binoculars, and sure enough, we saw six bison blots. Now I was pretty proud of myself for this, for spotting the bison, and as I was patting myself on the back, we rounded the corner, and we saw bison everywhere. These huge animals were sitting right by the side of the road, close to our car. Some of them were grazing, some were rolling on their backs and itching a scratch. They were just having a good old bison time. We admired them for a while, took five or six million pictures of them, and finally stopped the car to watch the sun set over the river. But we were tired, it had been a long day, it was time to go back to the motel, so we turned the car around. But then suddenly, one by one, a whole herd of bison decided to cross the road right in front of our car. We had a front row seat to this community. And so for a long time, we observed them and we noticed how this bison fellowship worked. The mothers herded their young ones across the road quickly. But other members of the herd, some of them older, strolled casually into the road, but then stopped for a long time to ponder life's mysteries. Sometimes they wandered back, and then someone urged them to keep going, or they caught up with a friend and they came back across the road together. At one point, two male bison had a conflict right in front of our car, and others circled around them while they worked it out. And then they moved on too. But what struck us was that the bison just kept coming in one slow stream of mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and cousins and friends, as if they knew intuitively that they just needed to stay together to cross the road to find the abundant grasslands on the other side. They were a community, a fellowship. In our scripture lesson this morning, the writer of Acts reports on the first intentional community of Christ followers, almost as if the writer is an observer, someone who can tell us how this community appeared to those on the outside who watched them kind of as if from their car on the road. Now we remember that on the day of Pentecost, people from all over the Judean world were filled with the Holy Spirit and were inspired by Peter's sermon about Jesus' life and death and resurrection. What then should we do, they asked him. Peter said, repent and be baptized. That day they were baptized and initiated into a new life of intentional community. Early Christians were called people of the way. 
They were known in the wider community for how they lived in the way of Christ, choosing daily practices that were strikingly loving and beautiful. People watching these first Christian communities, and especially this very first one, noticed that persons within it spent their days growing in their faith, praying, joining in fellowship meals, and sharing all that they had in common. They were joyful, loving, thankful people, alive in Christ and completely committed to one another's well-being. They made sure that everyone had what they needed, young and old. People admired this fellowship, and many were drawn into this luminous life in Christ, a life that seemed profoundly different from the way everyone else lived around them. I was born and raised in the church. I have always been part of this fellowship, this stream of mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and cousins and friends who have sheltered me and taught me and prayed for me. These beloveds have walked me across many roads and shared their gifts generously with me. My church community has loved me as Christ, embodying for me Christ's living, loving presence on this landscape. But friends, it's painful for me to recognize that my experience of Christian community is far from universal. And then in fact, Christians all too often do not share life together in ways that are strikingly loving and beautiful. In fact, people observing the church from the outside have often said to me, I love your Jesus, but I don't love your church. The musical Godspell returned to Broadway a few years ago, and the actor playing Jesus reassured us that this musical wasn't Christian because it was about love and compassion and grace. And when I began talking with students on campus at UT about life and faith, many of them said, I have been hurt by the church. I've been rejected by the church. I don't want to have anything to do with the church. And just this week, the West Ohio Annual Conference once again failed to affirm the gifts and spirit calling to ordained ministry of LGBTQI persons. But friends, we have an opportunity now as we emerge from the pandemic and it is becoming safer for us to gather together in person. This opportunity actually revealed itself to me over a year ago when I was having a phone conversation with a friend who long ago left the church and vowed never to return. But she was struggling with loneliness during the COVID lockdown. And she said wistfully, you know, when this is all over, I may look for a progressive spiritual community where I can feel safe and welcome and connected. I didn't realize how much I needed to be with people. My friend missed fellowship, the gift of a life within a stream of loving companions who would lead her across roads to nourishing grasslands. How then is the Spirit inviting and empowering us at Monroe Street to reintroduce ourselves to our larger community so those watching us on the road might see what Christ's love looks like and feel welcomed into this luminous life? Not long ago, the Spirit gave us a mission, a mission to be a people who deepen our faith through worship and prayer, through studying the scriptures and examining God's incarnational life in the world. And the Spirit invited us to become a people who engage our neighborhood, sharing generously what we have been given with others, as we are now doing through Bluff Street Village and Freedom School and the Bridge Food Pantry, our community garden, and our Kairos prison ministry, among many other ways. And 
The Spirit invite, invites us to become a truly welcoming, inclusive community centered in Christ's love, which is perhaps the most surprising, beautiful, transformative way we can be in this world that can be so hard and unwelcoming. So how, we, how may we live together so that people will see us and say, this is what I long for. I long to be part of this kind of community where I am seen and known and celebrated for who I am. And I'm also invited to become my fullest self in God. What might this look like now on the other side of COVID? I invite us to pray about this and talk about it and even try some new things in the coming weeks and months. Try some new ways of connecting with new friends. And we, we may discover that some of these new ways of being in community with one another may look a little different than how we have experienced church in the past. That's okay. Because what matters is that when I see you and you see me, we see Christ and we are drawn into a life that is all about giving and receiving love. And now friends, as we go forth into this week, I invite you and will you invite me to bear witness to God's love for this whole world so that those for whom love is a stranger will find in all of us generous friends. And may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Blessed